Have you ever felt let down by a story's ending? You know what I'm talking about. You read this book, you spend all this time investing your energy in getting to know these characters that you love and this great storyline and you get to the end and it's awful and it ruins the entire story for you. And instead of telling all your friends about this great book they've got to read, you quietly donate it to a thrift store and if it comes up in conversation, you cringe and say, please don't read that. As writers, we do not want that outcome for our stories. Crafting effective story endings is an art form. It is the last impression you are going to leave when they close that book, so it's super important that you get it right. Think about it. Your first chapter hooks the reader, the middle of the book keeps the reader reading, and the end makes the journey worthwhile. Now, a mediocre ending, that can ruin the entire experience. It can ruin all the hard work you've put into crafting these characters and this immersive world, and a mediocre ending can ruin all of your hard work. On the other hand, a truly memorable ending can just elevate your book in the mind of your reader, create an enjoyable experience, and it can encourage your readers to run to their computer and write you a raving review, a five-star review because of the ending. The ending is powerful. I have seven tips for you, for you to write an ending that leaves your reader begging for more. And tip number one is consider what you're writing. You could be writing a standalone novel or a series. Now, each one of those, the ending of each one of those has a different job. If you are looking for, to write a standalone novel, the ending of that novel needs to tie up all the loose ends. It needs to give a satisfying conclusion to the story for the reader. And that is it, it's because it's a complete package. You can't leave things hanging. However, if you are writing a series of books, your ending has to conclude the major conflicts of that book, but it also has to set up the conflict that's going to be in the next book. So its job, the ending of a series of books, the ending's job is to propel the reader to go get the next book, to want them to read the next book. Tip number two is what emotion, theme, or message do you want to convey in your story? Every story has some sort of message. And so the end of your story is a good time to evaluate. How did you do with weaving that emotion, theme, or message throughout the narrative as you've been writing? You may want to consider recapping that message at the end in the final chapter at some, in some way, but you want to make sure that you're not preachy, that it's really subtle because the message that you leave the reader with in the last chapter needs to be subtle and needs to leave the reader thinking about your message. Tip number three is people want closure. Your reader has gone on this journey with your character and immersed themselves in the world that you've created, and they really want to have a satisfying ending. They want to know how things end up for these characters. So make sure that when you are considering the end of your story, that you give your reader a satisfying ending. Number four is don't leave too many plot threads or subplots hanging in the wind. You know what I'm talking about. You're reading a book and there's questions unanswered. There's conflicts that never get resolved. That can be really frustrating. It's kind of like when you watch a TV show, a TV series, and you have invested hours and you've been binge watched this show and you're waiting for these characters to get their satisfying ending. What's going to happen? And then the show gets canceled. And that satisfying ending is never going to come. It's frustrating. Do not do this to your reader. You want to make sure that you have may have brought conclusion to those plot threads, those subplots, any questions that you may have raised throughout your book. 
It's okay to have a few loose threads, but very little, and you better have a purpose and a reason for doing this. Done effectively and done right, this can leave the reader pondering, what was the theme in that book? What did I just read? It can leave your reader pondering on your story for years. Number five is don't be too predictable or tidy. You don't want to leave your reader feeling like it was a formulaic or a, a copycat obvious ending. This can make it feel kind of like that Hallmark card formula that doesn't really satisfy the reader. If everything is tied up with a pretty pink bow and everything is happy, happy at the end, this can feel kind of like a, a wax statue imitation of a person, not real. Remember my point about very few loose ends still hanging out there at the end? Well, it is okay if there's a few things unanswered and ambiguous because what that does is it gives the reader's imagination to take flight and imagine what happens to these characters. Number six is don't try to cram in too much too fast. This can feel like the author is just trying to do an information dump, cram it all in in one chapter. You don't want that. I compare this to, you know you're having someone over for dinner and it's a last minute thing and you're like, oh my goodness, someone's coming to the house. Take everything and shove it in the closets and hope that the company doesn't look in the closets where all the mess is at. That can, you don't want that to feel like that in your last chapter of your book. To avoid this, don't be in a hurry. Slow down. Take your time. Instead of trying to cram everything into one chapter, try doing two chapters so that you give yourself a little more space to write the end of the story. The writing tip number seven is don't confuse your reader by changing the tone or the rhythm of the story at the end of the story. You want to stick with the rules and the rhythm and patterns that you've established throughout your story. Take the time to craft an ending that's authentic, meaningful, and emotionally satisfying for your reader. You can look at your ending and ask yourself, if you were reading this book, would you be satisfied with this ending? Find the perfect balance between closure and open-endedness and resolution and mystery. You want your reader to be satisfied, but you also want them to ponder and to be curious about what happens beyond the horizon of this story. What happens next? And that's what you want. Remember that the end of your story is the final impression that you are going to leave with your reader. The end of your story matters, probably even more than the beginning because the end is what's going to sell the next book. If you like this video and you want to learn more about story endings and actually some specific types of story endings, you will love this video. So check that out. And I would love to hear from you in the comments. What do you think makes a great story ending? I would love to chat with you about that in the comments. And I will catch you in the next video.